So welcome back all of you, Nana here, and then uh, we are into the next session on this uh, fusion <coughs> sales order import. Uh, I discussed with Sintil and then uh, what happens, he's also having a similar problem. So it's not getting imported properly. <coughs> so what he has uh, decided is he has already raised SR and then the Oracle is also struggling to give an answer to him. And so they have now decided to go and then do the import via EDA, electronic data interface. Now. So now in this video, what happens, I'm going to tell you about how uh, we are struggling on this. Now, fine, this is a really very complicated one. It's not an easy one, actually. And I don't know why these people have made it so complicated, actually. <clears throat> and then uh, there is some mistake which I'm making it, and then I'm unable to understand where exactly the mistake is now, fine. And then if you find out the mistake, please uh, point out to me so that what happens, I will now correct it, and then I will now make a, a new record on this, now, fine. So let me go and then share my screen on this, now, fine. We are into sales order import. <clears throat> So I got some documents and then from there what happens, I identified about how to do it now, fine. It's a very big uh, pain and then I got everything now, fine, go there. So first of all, what you have to do is you have to go to this navigation. This is navigation, then I go there. So I'll not take off this uh, document also, what happens, the sales order import also will be posted over here into the drive, Google Drive now. I go there. And in this place, <clears throat> let me go there and then paste it over here. So this is a place where you will now get all the latest documentation of cloud actually. Fine. So you can even get the user guides, implementation guides, etc. etc. Everything will be available over here. Now fine. Go here and then what happens? I download whatever you want. Fine. Go and then navigate a bit. You will understand about where exactly is what. And then all the things are available here. It is the latest one, which is all available here. This is the best one. The link is the best one. So you can you go to this link and then do it now. So go to the docs.org.com of this link, what happens? It will be showing all these things. Now locate and select order management orders. I go there and now select locate and select order management. <coughs> So we have <coughs> multiple things on this now. In the supply chain management, we have an order management link. Fine, click on select now. I have no circle the order management link. <coughs> He's waiting for this now. Waiting for the docs.org.com. So order management will be opening up now. So once when it opens up, so what you have to do next is what you go there. And then select the correct release of it now. Fine, go there. So you must know the release of it actually. Fine, go there. So the release must be known to you. <coughs> go there. So we have already selected what order management. It has gone there, fine. Not it gone, fine. I will not click again on this one, fine. No, I am going to order management. So, first of all, you have to select this one. I go there, drop down and then select it. And we have got what happens release 12 and then 18B and then ADC. Now we are working on ADC. So, what happens? You choose the ADC over here. The release is not chosen. So, choose the release and then go and then select the books for this one, fine. We are now going to perform an import now, fine. For which order we are go to the books now. Otherwise, you can even go to other places basically. I go there, click on the books now on this one. Click on the books now. The implementation uh, things will be showing all the guides actually. Fine, on the books, I go there. So I have now gone to the books now. Fine, click on the books, books will be coming on the right hand side. Now, fine, you can see the books over here. Now. So on this, what happens? Uh, locate and select file based data import for the supply chain management. All this now under the development now. Fine, we have one developmental link in the bottom. Fine, on this, what happens? You have to choose the file based data import for supply chain management and go there. So you go the page down and then go to the user is now is the user now fine go there go down go down. Next is implementation. You'll now find all the implementation guides on this now. And then afterwards administration guides, configuration extension guides, and go down security guides. Then under the development, what happens you go to the file based data import for the supply chain. And click on the HTML now find the HTML. Now we come to the file based data import for the supply chain. So click on now find expand the file based data import now find go there. <coughs> And then look at the sales order such. So on the left hand side, you'll be having one more link for the file based data import. Fine, next my click on it in the next one. So click on the file based data import and go there. Now you'll know how all the file based data imports on this now. Fine here, open the sales orders. Click on the sales orders now. This is what we are going to import now. Fine for the 18C. Fine, click on the sales orders. Now coming up. So let me click on this now. Fine, it has got around 13 or 14 sheets actually. Fine, go there. Click on the source sales order import. Let me import it now. Fine, go there. So I will now say, I will now make it as what test now. Uh, just underscore the name, fine. Uh, ASO underscore import. And some name I'm giving it now, fine. It will be easy for us to understand. <clears throat> so I will now keep it on C call and fine. Well, test SO import, fine. Click on save. Get no downloaded, fine. So go there. I will now open it up, fine. Show, show all. And then let me open it up. It will now open up. You open it up. Click on enable it. So I'll now come to this field and then what happens, I've already filled up my sheet now fine because I will now show the my one which has been done now fine with it. So I will now open up my now fine. This is a way to what happens I download and then start editing. So this can be used for all the templates basically. Whatever you want, what happens you can go there and then you can now download and then edit. 
So now what happens? I now go to the one which has already been filled. Actually, I have done it on the what happens? My old instance, no fine. You can even try on the 98 underscore EMP login and then uh, try to find out, no fine. So on the first one, fine. I have now given the sales order number now. And then the source uh, transaction system, what happens? It has been given by uh, Sindhil to use Aura electronic documents now. But if you go on and see this one now, I go there. Is a test one friend go on and have a look at it now and go to this place. And then they have got a lot of uh, this thing now. Go to the home. <clears throat> They've got very many transaction source systems now. I don't understand what exactly they are now. But uh, when I put some other thing, uh, it is not working. And then uh, with this information of Sendel, what happens is working. Or our electronic documents is working actually, at least. But it is not failing. And then it is not re it, uh, while reaching the interface server, it is not failing actually. And then again, we had to make an experiment. All this not fine. Why are you? They are using so many such systems. Not fine. GPR, LPG, and all on the example on the whatever they have given. And then what happens? We have the source uh, transaction identifier as well as source transaction identifier. There. Now this is uh, basically what a uh, sales order number actually. Uh, but uh, again, what happens? Why they are using such numbers? Basically, I couldn't understand this one. This is also really uh, very funny actually. Whereas Sandeep told me that what happens? This must be a sales order number actually. <coughs> Not clear about it. Go there, you ask. Go there, and then I give it. And then what happens? Uh, we have to identify the buying party identifier actually. Fine. And then uh, I tried with the buying party name. It failed. Now this time, what happens? I am going to say the buying party identifier now. Fine. And then I will not tell you about how to find out this value. Now, fine. The buying party identifier. How to find out? Buying party ID, 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 uh, name is what? ID and underscore customer now. That fails actually. Fine. This time, what happens? I'm not going to do it. We'll see whether it passes or not. Fine. I'm not sure about it. So I made a small change on this one this time. <clears throat> go there. Go further. No. So much of a technical involvement, and then that should not be the way. As such, the transaction currency code is USD. Fine. That is one thing. And then I have given what the 16th of uh, what happens at December. I, this is also a very change. No. Fine. Uh, the transaction on now. Fine. Go there. So let us know. Make it because I don't know which is a month and which is a year now actually. Uh, rather a date and month. So let me make it as 12 to 12. So what happens? I won't fail on this part. Fine. Go there. Because it will be definitely over there. Fine. Uh, I don't want to fail on this one. I just made a modification, but I thought that okay, fine. I don't know. Uh, I will not fail on this now because what happens? The month and date if it is clashing. What happens? A uh, uh, month will not exceed beyond 12. And then if the 16 is going to be a month, it will not fail on that. Fine. So I don't want a failure on that now. Fine. So I just made it as 12 to 12. So the red positioning business unit, I put it over there now. Over there, what else? And then the legal entity is also I'm putting it now. Fine, over there. So the data which I have collected before doing it now, fine. Now well, no, see, these are the data which I collected. The legal entity and business unit, you can now go to the assigned business unit business function. There, what happens? You can now identify this now. And uh, then our manage business unit. If you add one more column there, what happens? It will show you the BU ID also. Fine. The business unit ID is also required. Fine. It goes to now. The payment terms I have taken up for the customer definition actually. The inventory call, I know it, and then the item is known, and then the unit summary is also known. So the ones. And then I have taken the ship to address from the customer actually. From <clears throat> the customer, I have taken the ship to address. And then these customer site number and account number, I tried to populate it and then it was failing actually. And then afterwards, what happened? I'll tell you about how I had done it now. Fine. But it was failing. They're not accepting these numbers at all. Fine. From the customer definition, I tried this now. They're not accepting it. And then I find something else. And then what happens with the trial number that I was able to pass that test actually. But finally, I'm now landing up on some other problem. I will not tell you what I got exactly. So this is the ones you go there. <clears throat> so here, uh, one ID is required. I will not tell you about how to find out the right now. So uh, the ID, I don't know, I will pass it, I think. <clears throat> I'm not showing you. And then the header level, what happens? You don't have anything else. Fine, you know, so we are direct now. Right? And then you know, there are only three tab regions which has to be filled up. Right? I go with the second tab region. Right? I click on the second tab region. I will not go to the second tab region now. Second tab region is what? Do order lines all. Fine, first is the header line all. Fine, go to the order lines all. And then go to the home now. So here also what happens? I'm now giving this uh, uh, source transaction number now. Fine, you know, done. And then afterwards, the source transaction identifier is again for electronic documents. And then here, what happens? You go and give this number. It's a source transaction line identifier. So line, I'm going to have only one line. I'm giving it as a line. And then the first line number, the first schedule, as well as what happens is one. Right? One not one, one not one, and then one and one is okay now. And then here, what happens? You go there. <coughs> product identifier, product number. <coughs> Fine. You go there. And then I will now put the product number over here. Fine. Product number. So out of all the four things, what happens? One of them is the mandatory. I will now go and put the product number. Fine. It's 98 underscore ESTD underscore order. This is where I'm failing actually. Fine. This is where I'm failing. It is not accepting this number at all. Fine. It is already there. I will not show it to you. Fine. It is, this is where my failure is happening now. So I tried different methods and then what happens? This is the place where I'm failing it. So it's saying that there is some problem on the number basically. That's what it is saying. <clears throat> 
uh, I don't know where exactly the book. And then ordered quantity I given now. <clears throat> so you go there and then see the sometimes the ordered quantity each is there. Uh, the request been fulfilled in the organization is a fine 981 now. I know that is the organization now. So it says what? So the requisition, requisition fulfillment norm is what is the barrows of fulfillment. Fine, that's okay. And go there. The business unit now, fine. Requesting business unit identifier. <clears throat> and then uh, I have now given the name as a strong instruct giving the identifier. Identifier, we had to bring it from the technical side. So what happens here also, what happens the business unit name I have given, not the identifier actually. And I'm not sure about whether you had to put the identifier number or not. You make a check of it now, fine. But here it is not failing. It is not failing on the item number actually. I don't know why it's failing there now, fine. The item number is failing now. With all of the failures have been solved. Oh, no, what happens? The item number is now failing actually. Uh, we'll now go there. The way now. And this is, is I'm not failing on this one. <clears throat> go there. And then uh, next is what is uh, not required actually. The customer uh, customer item actually is not required. So go for them. Go for them. And then again, what happens? Uh, request receipt date. I'm not putting it as a toll toll. Uh, it's okay. <clears throat> it's, uh, the transaction code is order actually. Fine. Leave it as it's not. And then the remaining fields are not okay. Partnership is okay. <clears throat> and then the unit price I given. And then the unit selling price is five now. Fine. So five into five. Uh, what is it? Must be it is for ten, or ten quantities actually. Ten into five is fifty actually. Fine. What is? So there are ten quantities which are given now. Fine. So then you know, and then have a look at the quantities now. So quantity is ten now. Oh, yes. Ordered quantity is ten now. <clears throat> so uh, it is uh, ten into five is fifty. And uh, in purchasing, what happens if you put all the factors, it will not work at all. Fine. So, I'm not also very sure about it. I made a lot of RD, not tired actually from doing so many RDs actually in this place now. <laughs> so, I put this unit price as well as what happens, excellent amount also I put now. Fine. This is what I've done now. Fine. But here it's not throwing any error at all. <clears throat> here is coming on the item number. Can you see? Fine. These are all the, the standard ones which has been given. I have now used the same one now. On for the origination system document reference as well as what happens here, origin system document line reference. Right? Well, <clears throat> that has been given by Oracle, so I'm not choosing the same one or the and nothing else is required. So this case. The third tab region is a very complicated one. And what is the order order management here? What happens if you go there and wait now? So 50,001 is the order number. And then here, what happens? We have to have uh, with the source item here as a blank for both the ship and build. So if you have this as a blank, what happens? The two entries are there. Then what happens? It will be picking up. <clears throat> uh, this will be populating your lines on the header itself. When you're creating a sales order, what happens is that you have to get all the lines now. So this is responsible. These two blank lines are responsible for populating your line on the header level. One shift or no, no, no. Now here is the complicated part. Uh, here what happens? Out of these three fields, party identifier and then the party number and then party name, one of them is the must. When I write the party number as well as the party name, it is failing. But when I put the party identifier, it is not passing actually. And then here, what happens is required only for the use type as a chip to now. Fine, you can now read it now. Fine, Applic applicable only with the address use type. When I go there, I'm not able to see now. It is now saying clearly ad applicable only when the address type is ship to now. So this field is applicable only for ship to. So we have given the address type of ship to for this, I have given it now. And then this is these two are for the header level, and then this is for the line levels. The ship to also popular. And then if you go to the customer name, this is applicable only for the bill to know the customer name. Customer name is now there. <clears throat> so here, uh, what happens? I have not given the customer number as such. Fine, I will not give the customer name. It's working actually. Uh, maybe party name also will work, but uh, what happens? Uh, identifier definitely works. And then no, I will not show you, but how to find out the identifier ID number. And I think I have failed on the party name, I think. I'm not very sure what it meant. I made a lot of R&Ds and then what happens, I failed on this. And then this I have passed fine. So the customer name has been given again. Uh, this is also passing actually without the customer identifier. What happens, the customer name is passing. And go for that, go for that. And then similarly, what happens in this place, the party site identifier is required. Now. Fine. Here, there is no party site name actually. It should have been given such now. But anyhow, with a great difficulty, I have identified now. Fine. The party site identifier this is applicable only for ship to. So the first and third are ship to. The second and fourth are built to. So we have populated these two fields also. <clears throat> fine. So this is a very important one. And then apart from that, the MSS are not required actually. Fine. Now I will tell you about how to identify these values. now. One is a party identifier. And then uh, one is what? The party site identifier and then party account site identifier. How I identify it? You may be finding a better way. Fine. If you're finding it out, please tell me about how to do it now. Fine. What else? So these are three fields which I identify. One is the party identifier. <clears throat> one is the party site identifier. Fine. One is the party site identifier. One is the account site identifier. So we had to write a SQL query now. Fine. And then I identify these values. I'll not show you, but how do I identify? 
I will not write this query. Fun first one. The first query will now fetch you the party identifier as well as the party's identifier. The second query will now fetch you the what happens account side identifier. Actually, you may be finding some other query uh, which may be fetching all the three. Actually, fine go there. So let me go there and then it will not take copy it and then I will not run the query. Actually, fine go there. So we will not run the query actually here now. <clears throat> Uh, where is my <coughs> this thing? Link name. And here is okay. Fine. It's a place for me. Go there. You go to the reports and analytics on this one. Go to this place. So click on the more and then go to the reports and analytics. <coughs> click on the more and then go to the reports and analytics. So we are into the reports and analytics and then click on the browse catalog. It will be opening up one more thing. Click on the browse catalog there. So in this place, what happens? You have to click on the browse catalog. It will open up one more tab. You know, you know. So here in this place, you click on the new now. Right? You click on the new, and then you go to the what's called data model. Click on new. Here, what happens? We can now write our SQL query over there now. So click on the data model. What happens? We can even write our SQL query and then execute it. If you have any better method of doing it, what happens? You do it now. Right? This is one method through what happens your BA, the business intelligence route. What happens? I'm not doing it now. So we go there, and then there's no processing now actually. So once when you there, what happens? Whatever query you are writing it. I can very well do it now. Fine. I have already loaded a lot of useful queries on this now. I think Vijay has given me those queries and then I have already given to you. <clears throat> so I can use those things and then what happens again and improvise your this thing now. So now what happens? It is now going over there. You wait for some more time because it takes some time. What happens to get formed basically? Fine. It does not it come into the proper screen now. You can also see waiting, 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 it is coming in the bottom now. It's not coming, it's not coming, coming. <clears throat> Uh, so once when this thing is coming, or is now already come, it will not come to the diagram area. So here, what happens? You go there, you click on this uh, plus. There is a drop down area, and then click on the SQL query. I am not writing it now. I go there. I will not say test one. Now. And then application DBFS. This is the default one. It is not coming. I go there. Bottles. And then I will not write the query over here. Put the place. And then let me take a copy of the query. I go there. Click on it and then paste it. And then click on OK. <clears throat> it will not execute it now. Fine. Go there. No, it is not executed. Fine. Choose this. And then click on the data and then you go to the view. <coughs> click on data and then click on the view now. So click on the table view. So once when you click on the table view, what happens is getting it now. The party ID is nothing but the customer ID actually. The party ID is nothing but that. So it's now coming as what? 3697522. You can just see this now. I'm going to click on it now. In this place, uh, what I have done with the first one. Right, go to the home <coughs> and then go up now. So here the party ID is now fine three six nine seven five zero. So previously I used to have this what I mean the party name. Uh, it works with this number very excellently actually. Fine, brother. So I ordered this and then what I mean it should be the other way. You know? When we are doing it, we have to put all the party name and then do it now. Fine, now what I mean the identifier always works very well. Fine, brother. You want us go in place. So this is the party ID is ID. Now if you go and then see this now, fine, brother. This place. So in this place, what happens? Origin system reference is nothing but the party identifier actually. So there is a lot of difference on this now. Party ID and then what happens? Your party identifier, party side identifier, account side identifier. So many confusing names they have given now. So it's really really difficult to what happens? I do it. So we'll now go to the Wurge system reference now. Uh, go further. Go further. <clears throat> yeah, is the Wurge. Is the original system reference or whatever it is now? Fine, that number. So this number. This is also almost looking like a party ID one. Fine, go there. The party ID. Uh, fine, go there. I number it. Fine, go there. You want to put it now? And the party ID is okay. Fine, go there. Then afterwards, what happens? On the address use type, what happens? You go to IDEN address party side. Fine, IDEN. And go there. What else? You go for the beginning. You want to see IDEN party side ID. <clears throat> you go there. Go for the. I don't know where exactly it is now. I didn't put site ID and go for that. Go for that. Created a module. You have this now. I didn't address party site ID. I know that. 975526 is the one. I know that 975526. So I know I did it. So this query is now fetching me only the first two uh, values of this number. On this one. And for the third one, we had to uh, have a different query on this one. We will now take up a different copy and then go for the account side identifier. So we are now identify the party identifier and then party side identifier. Then I go for the account side identifier actually fine, with this query. Actually. Go there. I had to go to the column build to site use ID. Fine, go there. So this is a query. Fine, what happens? I go to the diagram and then I will now click on it and then edit the diagram. 
edit the one, edit it, and then change this one. Change this one, actually, put it there. Paste it over here, now, find this query. And then click on OK now. And then select it, and then click on what happens there. Go to the data, and then go to the view, and then go to the table view now. So it's now come over here, now, find go there. Here, what happens, I go to, go to build to site, use ID. Find build to site, uh, use ID, and go there, go for that. It's really very tough. I don't know for one customer I'm doing it now. And if there are going to be hundreds of uh, sales orders, it will be a really a painful one. I don't know why they have made it so complicated actually. <clears throat> Built to create into model. And when I referred the Oracle's MetaLink also, what happens? They're also suggesting a similar one. When they be, they're doing it in a different manner. But what happens? Uh, they say in a different uh, different uh, manner they have to do it. Now. The site use ID is not the one. Right? The build to use site ID, I had to use it now. Remember that. When I use this, it was failing actually. And then when I use this, it's working. Now it's okay. Fine. See, this one is this one. The build to one is available here now. Fine. That is also the build to build to site user. So I had to use this now. Fine. Maybe this and this are maybe same actually. So five uh, nine seven five two six is the one. You can now say this is the one which I had to use now. So by great difficulty, what happens? We identify this now. Fine. Now. For each and every customers, what happens? We have to do this exercise, or is there any other better better method of doing it? Now, the total thing is basically arbitrary for me. So I will not tell you about where exactly I'm populating all this party identifier, party identifier, and account side identifier. I'm going to show you. I will go to the Excel sheet now. Go there. So the business party identifier, I have already told you what happens. It's not done the first tab region. And then I go to the third tab region. Now, fine, go there. The third tab region, what happens is go there. In these places, I am not populating this. So first of all, the party identifier. Now. The party identifier for a ship to. For a ship to only, we'll do it. Not for the bill to. Fine, this one is for the ship to one. Fine, you can now see this one. You can now see the party identifier has been populated. Also. And then the party side identifier and the account side identifier is now coming over here. Fine, go there. What else? In this field, I have populated. The party side identifier and then account side identifier. This way I identified it now. Fine. The party identifier is now 7526 and then what happens 7528 now. <clears throat> so you can also see this is the party side identifier of the ship too, and then this for the ship too. And that's it. What happens? We have now filled up everything. Let us now go ahead and then what happens? We will now try to import it now. Go there. Click on it. I will now give a save now. I will say it is not done now. So I go to the main one, fine, click on it now, fine, go there, click on it. And then generate CSV files. So click on the generate CSV file. <clears throat> Click on generate CSV file and then I will now go to generate CSV file. Click on the generate CSV file on the main one. I go to the C and then I have a one directory called test now. I am now having a A01 underscore IMP underscore 14. I have already 30, uh, 13 times I have failed. Uh, but what happens is the 14th time, we will not see whether it comes up or not properly because I made some modification and then come back to the 14th attempt. I am now making it. I know that. The C colon test file, click on save now. I'm saving it now. The CSV file is saved now. And then you close this file. Do not save it because what happens? It has already created so many extra uh, this thing now. Extra uh, this thing. So click on cl uh, close it and then don't save it now right? because we can even use it the same one. R30 sales order import. We can again and again use it now. Don't save. Now. It is not done. So this is the one. And then remember when you are downloading everything and then doing it now. Fine. They have already populated so many things on the other one. Right? The first three divisions are very important now. Fine. Go there. This bot has go there, go to the place and then you'll be doing it now. Fine, go there, delete everything and then do it. The fourth one onwards, what happened? They have populated everything, you delete everything now. Fine, go there and then delete everything. And go there, you want us. Fourth one onwards, fifth one. So all these things, all the informations are not required for the initial testing, actually. Fine. And then this is where the transaction attributes. Next is sales credits, actually. Next is order payments. And then next is lot serial number. And then at first, order of one. So each and every average and what happens, you go there and then delete each and every first for the first exercise. And we had to pass on, and then this is the bills plan interface, and then the manual adjustments interface. There are so many tab pages that are 13 or 14 are there. Right? Go there, and then meticulously go there, and then delete each and every data over there. And go there. Select everything, and then delete. And go there. Delete, and then save it. So, likewise, you do it. And then afterwards, only do the import. So, let me close it now. Fine. Don't save. I'm saving it now. Go closing it now. Go there. So, this is another day to take a template with a lot of explanations that are given by Sindhil actually. Fine. So, this is also what happens. It is not of a use, great use to you. Fine. At least what happens in this area, I am not failing actually. But in the item number, I am going to fail. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. Now, having done this now, fine. The C colon on the test. What happens? We have done that. What happens? The CSV file creation. The 14th file is now created. Now, let us now bring it to the UZM area and then bring it to the interface table. So, I'm going to see. Click on it. Now. So we go there and then we will now come into the UZM area now. So the UZM area, I am going to go in now. <clears throat> So let me go to the UZM area now. 
So I go to the uh, basic region. <coughs> yeah. Here I go to bring you here. Yeah. So I go there, click on it on and I'll open the profile and go to click on it. And then go to the more and then go to the schedule the process. So let me do the import now. Click on it. <coughs> so click on schedule new process now. I'm not going to perform an import. Fine, go there. It's a load interface file. Fine, load int percentage. I'm going to do a tab now. And I click on search now. So go there. Load interface file. Fine, go there. Load interface file for import. Fine, click on OK now. <coughs> so here, what happens? I'm not going to bring it to the UCM area first of all. The CSV file, which is there in my hot disk, will be brought into the UCM area. UCM stands for Universal Content Management. So let me first of all bring it to that area now. And then from there, what happens? I will now bring it to the interface table. So I go there. Drop it on. The import process is sales order now. Import sales orders. You drag it, drag it, drag it, almost come to this area now. In this area, if you go there, what happens? You will now find the import sales order. Remember, the dragging has to come to this area. Then you will now find the import sales area. This is a UCM area partition in which what happens? You go there, drop it on. And then bring the file into the UCM area. So click on upload a, a new file. You drop down the data file, and then here, what happens? You click on the upload a new file now. Click on open file. Click on choose file, and then here, what happens? You go there, choose the SQL and test. And then this is one, fourteenth one, which is not on. Click on open. So by giving OK, the desktop file will now come into the UCM area. If I click on OK, the desktop file will be coming into the UCM area. It is now come. It is now there. So from the UCM area, let me if you submit it, it will now come into the interface tables of order management. So the desktop file has now arrived to the UCM area now. By what happens by choosing this file, right? uploading a new file, it has now already come now, and then it is now available on the import sales order area partition now. And then click on submit, it will now come into the interface table. So I click on submit, it will now be coming into the interface table. So and go there. A series of controls are going to run now. I click on it now. So it's now going to run now. So a load interface file for import is now running. Fine, go there. <coughs> so it will now run some five six concurrents actually. So let us wait for this concurrence to complete now. So they are running now. So it's all succeeded actually. So the load uh, interface file for import has now succeeded. So it has now invoked the three more concurrent because the first three sheets are only having the data. The remaining data have been removed now. Fine. Maybe because of that, I'm not sure about it. So if you do more and more, uh, what happens the sheets, it will be giving you more and more loaded file for interface. Now let us now bring it to the, what happens the base tables, now, fine? the final one. So now it has now reached the interface tables of uh, sales order. Now I click on the schedule new process. And then here, what happens is the import sales order. Fine. Sales. <coughs> Find percentage import percentage. It's a sales order import now. Click on search now. So it's import percentage sales percentage. <coughs> so click on search now. So it's the import sales order the one find for the click on it now. Click on OK now. So my sales order number is 50,001. And then click on OK now. I will now drop down the source system and then I will now make it as an electronic document. I tried with this and then treat this also, but everything is now failing actually. Uh, with the electronic documents only, it is now at least passing now. Because otherwise, it's now failed basically. And now, but now also it's failing. But uh, what happens? Uh, the the failure reason is uh, very strange actually. Fine, 2001. I'm not giving any other thing. So, customer name is blank, customer number is blank. So, with which what happens? I'm going to run the import. No. The batch number is blank. Only source system and the order number is there. So, this is the parameter I'm passing it to the what happens? The import sales order. Fine, click on submit now. So, I'm submitting it. Fine, go there. So, 174 is running. This is going to fail actually. Now, it is going to spawn a child process actually. It will be spawning a child process now. I can see <coughs> it's not running. So it has not spawned import sales order sub process now. Fine, it's not running. If it passes, it will be excellent actually. <coughs> it's not running, running. So it will end up an error now. Fine. Again, the 14th time I've ended up in the error actually. Select it now. It will now read the error data. So go there. And then let me read the error. Open it now. So open up this attachment now. I will now save it to C colon. Thank you. Save now. 
and then let me open up this now. Right? Click on it, open it up, and then take a copy right now. Copy, and close it now, and then minimize it, and then open up a Word file now, <coughs> and then paste it now. So the first one it is not showing you the parameters which you have passed now. I have not passed any batch numbers. I have not given the source number, source system as what or I written documents and then the order number, the uh, customer name, and then other things are all blank actually. I go there and So it's not doing now. And go there and then have a look at it now. Go there. Order management did not import the source order because of the following error. The error occurs in the source order number on source order line number one, source item name, and then what happens? This is the item's ID actually. And then afterwards a dot dot is coming, no other information is there actually. Previously, I was having so many what happens errors on the customer ID, party ID, identifier, side identifier, etc., etc. And then after having done those exercises, what happens? I am not getting those errors. And finally, I have landed upon this error actually. I couldn't understand this error at all. What is the problem on this now? And then what happens instead of this? What happens? Your 98 underscore STD underscore order. I populated this ID itself. Then also what happens? Not giving the same error. Then what I did is I made one small change. That is why what happens, number of orders imported is zero. I made the source system as OPS now. Fine. There, what happens, I'm now getting a different error actually. Fine. I will now make a change and then show it to you. Fine. Let me open up, keep it as is now, fine, go there. So let me open up this file and then I will now again do it. Now. Go there. Click on it now. So let me open up this file now. So click on it now. Go there. So I will now open up this file again. <clears throat> go there, go to the records. And then let me open up. I made one small change, and then what happens? I'm not sure if you can go there. The, the order header now, no, not the, the line area. The line area, what happens? I go there. Okay. I, instead of the product number, what happens? I give the product identifier also, I'm not getting the same error. Now. I, with the scale query, I identify the, what happens, the product identifier. So that is also giving the same error. But here, what happens when the source type, so, so system product reference, now, I will not give OPS. Now, if I give OPS, I'm not getting a different error actually. Just fine. I will not be getting a different error. So you know, go there, control S, commit now, save it. <clears throat> now let me go there and then do it now, fine. I'm not doing it for the 15th time. Now, not only 15th time, I've done for the C also some 15 times. It is almost 30 times I've done it now. <laughs> 14, fine, go there, delete, now shift, delete. Click on S now, now I'll now do the 15th one now, fine, go there. So I have now added this now. Now what happens, we'll be getting a different error we'll now see. Go there, we'll go to the instructions now. Click on generate the CSV. In the C, I have already exhausted some around 20 numbers. In the A, I have now exhausted so many things. <laughs> underscore AMP, underscore 15 now, fine, come on. So what is A0115, and I'm doing it now. I go to the C column. I go to the test. Now. So A01, IMP15 is the one, fine, click on save now. I'm saving it, fine, okay, now then close it without saving it now. Fine, close it. Don't save it now. So this file will not leave it as a snowplane. So we are done right now, fine. Let's now bring it to the interface table. So close it now. You go there, monitor process, fine. Click on schedule new process now. <coughs> Load interface for import. Load percentage, IMP percentage. Load interface for IMP. Click on OK. Click on OK. So I'm going to pass on and then bring it to the sales order UCM area now. So load interface file by import now. Go there, drop it on, and then let us now bring it to the one. Drag it, drag it, drag it almost to this area, now, this area, and then you'll be finding import sales orders now. So data file, what happens? I now bring it from my what happens from my desktop into the UCM area now. And it's the area, the fifteenth one. I'm now choosing it. Click on open now. I click on OK, by which what happens, it comes to the UCM area. Now click on submit, it will now come to the interface table. Now. I click on submit, it will be coming to the interface table. So, I click on okay now. so some four or five concurrents or six concurrents will be running now. So click on OK, click on OK now. <clears throat> so you can now see these concurrents are going to be now. I know what this error means now. But it works basically. So the load interface file is now running and go to select it. So there's no succeeded fine go there, no running fine has completed and then it's succeeded. Now let us bring it to the base area. Fine click on the schedule process now. So it's the import sales order. Import sales order. Fine click on search now. <coughs> Over there. Import sales order. Click on OK now. Okay now. So here I go there. And then I go to the electronic documents and then 50,001 now. 
So this is what that's fine. These are informations I'm not giving it up to as well as uh, we are given everything. Fine, go ahead, click on submit on the submission. This time we'll be getting a different error, you can say. It is now saying some cross-reference, this thing, that thing is missing. I couldn't understand what exactly it means now. They should have made it simple actually. If I, I don't know why they made this import process so complicated actually. But what Sindhil is saying is that in 18B it is working fine. In 18C onward it is not working. <clears throat> oh God. What sort of modification they have done? I know, I know. So, so click on open this now. I know that. I will now save it. Let's see if you can save. So let me go there and then open up this file. Take copy it and then remove it. And then remove it. Open it on a Word file now. Now the parameters which are passed is all coming up. And now what happens? You can now see it is now a different error. Did not import the source because of the following error. The inventory item was not found for the combination item cross reference key OPS and then the source system is OPS. That means what? There is something here in this area. I feel that what happens? We have to refine this. We go there, open up now. In this area, what happens? Only in the product number area only it is now giving a problem. There are the four fields which are required actually. Out of which only product number, because any double star, what happens, only one data is required. Somewhere if I do something properly, what happens, it may, it may not be OPS actually. Or what exactly it means now, right? in this place, what exactly it means now, I couldn't understand this. Cross reference key OPS and then source system OPS for this combination. It should have been more elaborate actually, that's what Sindhil also saying, right? the errors which is not showing is not really understandable actually from the front end actually. So those who are technical guys, what happens, you can go through this now and then do it now. Fine. I will now attach this one as well as what happens. I found out one more of the sales order import, what happens if you go there. And then I refer the meta link and then what happens in the bottom, they're given something more also. Fine. The next pages I have now added now. Fine. Over so one more self statement and another self statement. And then uh, what happens is now giving two more statements of the, the metal link now. It shows you all these things now. Fine, whether it's the example of the SQL outputs. And then what it says is that what happens is we have to fill up these information from these two SQL queries actually. It's okay for one customer, it's okay. But if it's going to be some hundreds of customers, I don't know how much of time it will now take for us to what happens is draw this information now. Fine. All this information has to be obtained now. And then only what happens is you cannot start to fill up this template now. It's really, really very tough. If you give them the simple names, what happens? It'll be easy. Fine. Whatever you're using it, the other one's not. So this is what, if you go and then refer the meta link about how to do the sales order import, what happened there? They're asking us to run these queries now, first of all. And then identify all this information now. Fine, all this information I read away. And then what happens? You have to find, you just refer the wrong side. And then populate this information onto the, what happens, Excel sheet. So that way, what happened, they are saying it now. Right? So really, very difficult. So I will now, what happens, upload the sales order import as well as the R13 one for you to make an r &D. And then whenever anybody finds a successful import or where exactly I make a mistake, please tell me. So that what happens, I will now correct it. <clears throat> there, I am not getting stuck now. Right? So I hope that some of you, because there are so many technical guys who are here now. Right? So they can even go through the templates and then what happens, please suggest me. Right? So thanks for your help and then bye and then we will not try to see somewhere. Again on our next video. Fine, bye. Mm -hmm.